Abe Lincoln Remembers by Ann Turner Pictures by Wendell Miner When I was little, the cabin we lived in was small, with one room and one window. At first I thought the sky was square, like a piece of cut cloth. I could only see two birds in the sky and one squirrel in the tree. When I got bigger, Pa told me my legs were like a cult's, and he was afraid I'd fall down. They were so long and shanky. Sometimes I went to school, but I don't suppose those days would add up to much more than a year. I'd fold up my legs like an umbrella and sit quiet at the back of the classroom, gulping down learning like water. But Pa wouldn't allow me much schooling, making me chop wood, build fences, plant corn, and drive the horses. I did learn to read though, got some history on my numbers. I practiced them on the back of a fire shovel, for soot and ashes made a fine slate. And I would do anything for a book. I would read any chance I got and dream of freedom, of rising like a hawk into the sky to some fine high place. It was time to move on. I left, no money in hand, no second shirt, just a handkerchief around a piece of cornbread. I worked on a flatboat and in a general store. When the storekeeper saw how I towered over all the others, he'd bet I'd whip the best wrestler around, Jack Armstrong. We locked arms and bodies, swung back and forth, then he downed me with a leg throw the rules did not allow. But I shook hands with him and we became friends. I knew that being tall is not enough to make your way in this world. I needed words for that. When I studied to become a lawyer, I practiced my cases out loud as I walked. Learning how to use words, like a leading rein on a cult, to take people where I wanted. But when I ran for the legislature, I saw it would take a good deal of tugging to persuade people that slavery was wrong. Then I found Mary, who agreed to be my wife. She was bright and brave, and like a flag crackling in the wind, all color, rustle, and shine. When I ran for the Senate, she told me, you will win, and someday you will be president. How I laughed at that, but later others thought the same, and I was nominated to run for the highest office. I talked and debated to show that people, we must be one nation, not part slave, not part free. When I had won the presidency, we took our three sons, Tad, Willie, and Robert, to the White House. They were like balls bounding down the road, and people said they had no manners or discipline. I thought happiness more important than manners, though I didn't like it when Tad drove his cart and goats down the White House hall. But we had need of happiness then, for the great wound opened in the country and in my chest. The war. I tried to keep the North and South together until it was clear that talk could not mend this great division. The dying grieved me so that I had kept a joke book on my desk to keep from weeping. And I was terrified we would lose. I could not find good generals, and we lost as many battles as we won. But when we won the Battle of Gettysburg, it seemed the Union might prevail. When I went and saw all those graves lined up like the rails I used to split, I could hardly speak. Words could not lead me here, and I thought my speech a short, poor thing. I felt in the middle of some vast tug of war until I thought my heart would break. Finally, our side had won. The country is not divided, and the slaves are free. I can be glad of that, though when I look in the mirror, I see how sorrow has dug lines into my cheeks. I told Mary that tonight is a time to be happy. As we wait to go see a play, I think again of that little house, the small window, the piece of sky, with two birds and one squirrel. 
How much has come to pass since then, and how much there still is to be done. Abraham Lincoln was the greatest and most inspiring president, one of the finest our country has ever known. His words echo down the years to us, calling to us, reminding us of what it means to lead an ethical and courageous life.